Hello and welcome to this AIM tutorial. And what we're going to be talking about today is brake bias. Now I'm lucky enough to be able to adjust the brake bias while I'm actually on track and while I'm in the vehicle. And any of you who are able to do this, this might be something that's of particular use to you because in many respects, what you want to be able to know is how much have you actually changed that bias? And it's one of those things that for me, I have a little um, valve or, or a little knob that I can turn. I can't believe I just said knob on video, but I have a little knob that I can turn to the right or to the left, and that moves the bias towards the front or the rear of, uh, of the brakes. Um, in many respects, it's a turn. So it's like half a turn here, half a turn there. But what does that actually mean in terms of how much bias that I've just sent to the front brakes rather than the rear brakes? And so this tutorial is really useful in terms of being able to set that up. Now you do need to make sure that you have sensors available to uh, give you the pressure being applied to the front brakes and the rear brakes. I have a sensor for both um, that plug into my Evo 4S. Many of you who may have data loggers or dashes may also be getting this information coming in from your car's ECU. But if you do have the ability to measure front and rear brake pressure differently, this is going to be really useful for you. So enjoy this tutorial and um, let me know what you think in the comments box below. So here we are on the configurations page of Race Studio 3. And as many of you know, I run an Evo 4S in my Formula Ford, but this would be applicable to anyone who's lucky enough with their configuration to have the ability to measure the pressure of their front brake and their rear brake separately, because then we can work on configuring um, a brake bias for you. And so I'm gonna open up this configuration. You can see it says demo. I've got it set up for today's video. And if I click here, you can see these are all the channels. Um, that are being fed into my data logger, my Evo 4S. And you'll notice uh, that channel one and channel four, it doesn't matter which channel it is, it just happens to be those two channels coming into my logger, are for brake pressure on the front and brake pressure on the rear. These are two separate uh, sensors um, and the adjustment of the bias is done um, on a valve. Now, you may be getting brake pressure um, coming in from your ECU, from your vehicle, and if you've got front and, and rear brake pressure, you can also do this analysis as well. But one of the things that we want to be able to set up um, is a math channel. Now, I'm not talking about math channels that are set up um, within your analysis to be able to understand uh, data. More so, this is a math channel that gives you a new channel to analyze, and it also gives you uh, a new channel that you can put into your dash um, of your vehicle. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to click up here on math channels. And one of the ones that I've already got set up for my vehicle um, is calculated gear. And this is a math channel that determines um, what gear uh, I'm in based upon um, RPMs and speed and a few other variables. But what we want to do today is we want to add another math channels associated with bias. And so I'm going to click on add channel and the two top ones are bias and bias with thresholds. And the difference being is that the bias with threshold is it calculates the bias when um, both thresholds are exceeding um, a unit of zero. So that means both um, uh, sensors are effectively engaged or switched on. And so obviously for uh, a brake bias in a Formula Ford using the um, sensors that I have, that's the variable I want to be able to set up. And the calculation is exactly what we want to be able to see when we look. What is the percentage of bias um, towards one of the two channels, which typically um, is to the front, which is what percentage of the brakes um, and the force that's being applied on the brake pressure is being applied to the front brakes versus the rear brakes. And depending on what that percentage will give you a percentage as to how much is at the front. And so it could be at the rear if you wanted to, but we're going to set it up for the front. So I'm going to click on this bias with thresholds and I'm going to click on OK. Now I'm going to be given um, this um, useful uh, uh, box, which gives you the opportunity of being able to configure um, your brake bias. So you can say bias with threshold, or in this case, you may just want to say brake bias. Um, and uh, you can change any of the other parameters that you want to show up, because this is what your channel is going to show up. And so you could say um, simply just bias if you wanted to, because we uh, aren't adding any other variables uh, in this analysis. Now the sampling frequency is how often is this um, bias measure that is taken um, and uh, it's 10 per second and that's absolutely fine and we also want to be able to see this uh, at one decimal place you could see 
multiples or you could see uh, no decimal places at all I think one is absolutely fine this means that you'll see let's say for example if we were 50 50 50.0 50.0 and if it was um, 51 and a half 51.5 and then it would be 48.5 um, to the rear it just gives you that one decimal place um, of accuracy now it may or may not necessarily be needed but it's useful to have now the next thing we need to be able to determine is what are the channels that you want to use and this is where your break channels come into place and so here I'm going to click on this and I'm going to go down to my um, uh, vehicle channels and I'm going to click on um, brake pressure front and for the second channel, I'm going to click on brake pressure rear, which now is going to give me these particular areas of um, uh, uh, the channels that I want to be able to analyze. Now, the minimum threshold is zero. I'm fine with that minimum threshold being zero for now, because effectively I want to measure this anything above zero in terms of where it is. And so um, I'm happy with that particular variable set up. So that's effectively the uh, mathematical channel that I've set up that gives me the bias. And when I click on that, now what's gonna happen is I'm gonna get a second um, channel that's gonna show up. It's gonna give me the information. It's gonna give me the percentage that is there. Um, and um, I'm gonna be able to use this um, in my uh, analysis. Now, from this point onwards, you are going to see the break bias variable in all of the um, logged sessions that you make um, once you've transmitted this to your particular device. It's gonna start calculating this and all the sessions uh, and laps that you do. But for me, the other thing that I really wanted to be able to see is I wanted to be able to see the break bias in the vehicle. The reason being is that if I'm testing and you know I'm changing the bias to be able to see what's going on, I want to be able to know in a quick glance on screen what the bias is rather than wondering where the actual valve or the, um, you know, the, the, the um, uh, for want of a better word, the, uh, the knob that I'm going to turn in the car is going to be in relation to um, uh, what particular percentage of bias. I don't want to be having to guess or staring down instead of looking at where I'm going um, on, uh, on track. And so to do that, we want to be able to set up bias um, within the actual vehicle itself. So we're going to go to the CAN expansion. So I'm using um, an Evo 4S, so I actually have to add um, a dash to my uh, logger. If you're lucky enough to be in a position where you have it all in one setup, for example, you have a dash, um, any of the MX series, for example, um, that's also uh, the area where you'd set this up. But I'm just going to click on CAN expansions and it's going to open up my GS dash. Now here right now, um, I just have two very simple pages that are set up. I have my driver's page that gives me the oil pressure, water temperature, speed and lap time. Very simple information that, uh, you know, I'm just looking forward to make sure that, uh, you know, all of the key metrics are, uh, are OK for the car. It's not too hot. The pressures haven't dropped too low. And I also have a page set up for tire pressure, which um, is something that uh, you will see over time, more videos explaining how we've set that up. But I wanna set up the bias page today. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on a new page here. And I wanna be able to see bias, but I also wanna be able to see a few other pieces of information, but not too much. So I'm actually gonna click on this one here. Now, page one, two, three, four, really are indicators of how many channels are on that actual page. So you can see there's one channel, which is speed on, on P1, there are two variables, which is speed and RPMs on two, and then there are three. Now these could be anything you like in terms of these channels. So what we're gonna do is I wanna see three. What I wanna see is bias, I wanna see the pressure at the front, and I wanna see the pressure at the rear. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click there, click on okay, and this is the page that we're setting up. Now, um, I also wanna go in and change the name of this page, and I can call this break bias just so that it's uh, easy to know where it is. So brake bias has shown up, but right now it's just showing me um, different pieces of uh, data. In fact, I think right now it's showing me um, the uh, tire pressure channels. So I wanna change that. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go first and foremost into my car's um, actual channels coming in from the Evo 4S. And so I'm going to click um, and drag brake pressure front, and I'm going to click brake pressure rear. Um, so that's going to give me the actual pressures that are being applied on the brakes um, on the dash itself. But then we want to be able to add in the bias as well. This is where, you know, if we find ourselves on track and we're on this page and we go into a corner, this happened to me just recently as I was testing uh, at Castle Coombe, 
and I would be coming into the S's and, you know, I'd be getting up as brave as, as I could to break later and later into that particular complex. And, um, you know, I glanced down as the wheels locked up and saw that the brake bias was near 60%. So arguably a little bit too much brake bias towards the front. So how did I do that? Well, I went down to math channels and I took now this brake bias that I just created and I dragged that and I popped that in there. So now that's going to tell me the bias on screen. Now I have this page available to me. All I need to do is save the setup, transmit this to my Evo 4S. And now when I'm running, um, every time I apply the brake and these variables are over zero, I'm going to get a bias reading, which is going to help me understand what's going on. And so if, for example, I'm testing or I'm out on track and the front wheels are locking up, I know what the bias is. I know if it's too far to the front, too far to the rear. And then all I need to do is to know if I need to turn the bias or the valve to the left or the right to be able to increase or decrease uh, the percentage of bias towards the front. And so that's how you set up um, brake bias um, for your dash and for your data logging. So there you have it. That's the brake bias tutorial. Hopefully it's something that you're going to be able to use uh, and it's something useful to you. I actually used it just this last weekend where all of a sudden um, we went from a very dry track condition to a very damp and very wet track condition and I was able to actually adjust the bias to the rear and actually know on the dash how much I was actually adjusting the bias to the rear. So I could remember that for later on. I could also see it uh, in the data if I needed to uh, afterwards. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you want to see more content like this, if you don't like this content, uh, please comment in the box below and we'll do something to be able to make sure that we can give you uh, information you need. It just leaves me to be able to say thank you so much for watching this video.